What the fuck's up, bitches? I mean, how are you today, friends? <laughs> okay, so you want to read tarot cards. Good. You should. It's wonderful. It's a good way to connect with yourself and help others. Now, you want to read tarot cards. What's the first step there? I guess the first step is deciding you want to read tarot cards. Second step. <laughs> you need cards, right? Okay, so you need to get some tarot cards. Now, I've heard many times that tarot cards have to be gifted. And I'm 35. And I've been reading tarot since before, seventh, no, wait, before ninth grade. So 14-ish, at least, it's, you know, latest, because I know I had a deck before that. Long story. Anyway, <clears throat> until last year, I was never gifted a deck. So I read for 20 years without being gifted a deck. Facts. Um, you don't have to be gifted a deck. You can't just wait forever for someone else to decide that you're going to be a tarot reader. You can go get a deck. Now, I do suggest, um, if you can shop in person, that's great. For your first deck especially, it's probably important um, to visually be able to see the cards because a lot of interpretation comes through the images. Now, I'm sure there's lots and lots of people in history who have just read with like a deck of poker cards, which is badass. And I can do that now, and if I go to prison, I will have value. Let's hope I don't go to prison. But uh, my point is, it's different for everybody. So don't be, don't put yourself in a box. What's the number one rule? There are no rules. There are no rules. Number two rule, or second law, you only get what you give. So put some effort into picking out your deck, okay? Um, but it doesn't have to be a gift. That's, that's false, completely false. I don't know where the tradition might have started, but in my existence, it's not true. So I had the same set of cards for like 17 years, two, two decks. Uh, it's not talking about the one I had before. I had like a little trainee deck once many, many, many moons ago before I had other ones. And it was like, it had the meanings on the card, like from the, you showed you the reverse, the normal meanings. It was super dope. So if you're, you know, new to it, you can find a deck like that where it's written on the fucking card, dope. Because you can, you know, you have your book. Books are great. You should definitely reference your book, especially when you're still learning the meanings. But I just like to have the meanings right there. It's like, okay, you know, quick reference. Um... Side note, sometimes if, like when I'm doing a reading, sometimes I'll, I'll have the meaning, uh, you know, right there with me. I'll know what the card's trying to say. And then sometimes they're like, eh. and so I'm like, okay, I better read the book because I'm going to miss a word that's going to resonate with the person I'm reading for and make a huge impact on them. So you want to read tarot. First step, get some, get some cards. Or first step, decide you want to read. Second step, get some cards. And side note, you have to be willing and able to listen to your intuition because that's a lot of what tarot reading is. Now, getting your first deck. Um, oh yeah, here's where I was. I had two decks I used most of my life. And then I had a house fire. And I lost my decks. I had Tarot of the Moon Garden and Mage the Ascension. They were so amazing to me. And they're gone. Okay. Can't read them anymore. So I did something crazy. Well, not crazy, but I did something that really helped me. Helped me a lot. And I don't know if it's a good idea for, for like brand new beginners, but if you're reading tarot for a while and you're feeling like taking it to the next level, make your own deck. Boy, it took me a year, okay? I learned the meanings of the cards better. I learned, like, systems that are, you know, constant in different different decks, but the same cards, like, for the hermit, he's always got a light. Because he's following the light, which is the star, which is another card. It's really cool and important to know. Um, you'll start knowing your intuition on the card will improve as you study the symbols and the consistent patterns. Um, like judgment. Always has a horn on it. Always seems to have a musical instrument. Pretty cool. I can, you know, I associate that with Gabriel's trumpet because I like Gabriel more than the other angels because he kills stuff. That's just how I get down. Let's see. Um, for me, justice has to be blind, but I'm not sure if that's a consistent thing. Let's see some other ones that are cool. 
And I made this deck, right? I've been reading with it for about a year and a half after I made it. No. Reading with it for about, I don't know. It took me almost a year to make it. It's been a little over another year since I started, so two years. One to make it, one to read with it. But there are still some cards I want to go back and, and redo because some of the symbolism I've learned since I did this has changed significantly. Now, while I'm doing this, let's talk about the death card. The death card! I'm gonna die! Oh my god! Oh my god! No. 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 What is death? Death is a change of your state of being from physical to energetic. So, death card, change. Um, the chariot card usually has two things pulling the chariot. So for me, I used uh, comets, and they're just in the same, you know, scene, or that same outer space as my, my chariot, which is my spaceship. Uh, there's probably a significant, there's, okay, uh, five of cups. I learned that in the five of cups card, two card, two cups are upright and three cards are, are spilled over. So for me, I used two live fish, three dead fish. It shows don't whine over what's lost because you still have something left, you know, and don't only focus on what's left because you're letting things that are not in your immediate peripheral or your, your immediate attention die or spill. It's important. Wow, wow, wow. My Wheel of Fortune card does not have the animals because the Wheel of Fortune usually has like four elemental animals on it. Which are actually like the four animals that represent Scorpio because we are the shit and you guys just can't fuck with it. But I do have the nine spheres of magic, which are elem elemental as in not fire, earth, air, water, whatever. But elemental as in pieces of universal existence. <clears throat> Mind, spirit, time, things that exist that are The stuff that the universe is made out of. Uh, let's see what else do we have that's significant. Okay. So, Knight of Cups. The Knight of Cups always has a cup with a fish in it. I didn't know that before. And I never noticed it. It can either mean like you know, a new birth or an apology. But I like to think of it as a message. Okay, this is one of my favorites too. One of the like, rules you learn. The magician. Manifestation. Um, having the tools you need. The magician almost always has the infinity symbol above its head and the four elements in the card because he's got everything he needs to do to manifest from creation. <clears throat> the Hierophant, in my experience, I'm not sure if this is 100% true, but I'm pretty sure, he always has a pillar in his hand, like a, a scepter. And so I used the symbol of prime, which is like the Jedi force. It's the thing that connects us all, the primordial energy of nothingness that became creation that is us. It's our, and by knowing that everything was once nothing or was once one, you know everything is still one and you're able to affect it. And that's how magic works. But anyway, uh, the fool. The fool generally has a bag that they carry with them on their journey and a little pet or friend with them on the path. It's exciting. The moon. Generally has the moon. <laughs> and I usually notice a, some sort of shellfish. And then the two dogs are always there in my mind, but they're probably not really always there. But it's significant to me. And I figured it's one of those rules where you learn something like this. Wow, 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 wow. What else do we got for them? That's a rule that's always consistent. No, this one's not like a rule one, but it's cool. It's my Eight of Pentacles. It's uh, putting in hard work. I just thought that one was good, so fuck off. This is one I'm going to redo, but it's also pretty funny. Seven of Cups, having many options. An octopus doing a, like, you know, the shell cup game. Which one's the bonder? Genius, right? Okay, this is just another one of my favorites. Nine of water, wish fulfillment. What does a fish wish for? Worms. Sure. <laughs> um, the, the five of pentacles is something where you will generally see somebody that is alone 
and outside of wherever the activity is, like you can see them outside of a church or basically they're alone out in the cold. That's kind of what it represents. Strength card, again, you see the infinity symbol above her head. Generally, it is represented by a female. And there's almost always a cat in the picture with them. That's a consistent thing you see with the strength card. But making my deck really, really, really impacted my connection to cards. And, of course, after you spend that much time creating a deck, uh, you're going to be more connected to that deck than any other deck. But it also taught me a lot about reading all cards. Like That's how I learned how I can now read the, a poker deck. Because I know all the minor arcana meanings. Let me pick out one more thing to make a point here. Okay. So you're like, oh, make a tarot deck, right? Okay. That sounds really easy because I'm such a great artist and blah, 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 blah. Find the worst fucking one. Okay. All right. Six of Pentacles. Clearly, it's giving to create balance. You know, equal give and take. Um, that is not extraordinary, complicated artwork, but it conveys a concept. So don't give me that I can't draw shit. You can convey a concept, even if it's fucking scribbles or stick figures. Do a fucking abstract, intuitive deck, whatever. Down the road, if you want to read tarot, I do suggest making a deck because it is an incredibly enlightening experience, and I'm glad that I undertook it. It was completely worth all the effort and infinitely it has paid me back for the effort that I put into it. And so I try to honor it always. Um, okay, so do you need your first deck to be a gift? No. You don't. Do you need to memorize all the cards right away? Hell no, you don't. I still check my book. Absolutely facts. I still check books. Um, the little pamphlets inside that come with the cards or the books that accompany the decks are cool as fuck because they give you different meanings for each deck. Like I said, you can want to connect to the imagery. Um, each person who reads and each person who makes a deck will ultimately have some differences in the way they interpret each card. That's good because it gives us variety and it gives us an ability to connect different concepts on a much greater and more intimate scale at the same time. So yes, read from your book. Don't be ashamed if you read from your book. It's important sometimes to make sure you're relaying the message you're supposed to relay and you have to learn how to trust your intuition on when you need to double check what it is or check every time whatever makes you comfortable you're going to be a fine tarot reader if you just listen to yourself and you trust that you can if you can find a cool book like this this book is fucking amazing i recommend it but um you know it's separate from any of my decks so it's going to have its own individual uh meanings not associated with the specific cards that each deck supplies you with. So it won't be the exact same meaning as anything that I've got in any of my other ones. And it's so important to be able to draw from lots of different places when you're trying to master something that's supernatural or um, metaphysical or beyond this tangible reality. You need to be able to draw in from all sources. So, you know, if you can find it, Look into it. Give it a chance. Uh, feel it out. See how it feels. Um, but don't be afraid to read from a book because, for God's sake, it can really make the difference between a reading helping someone and being complete gibberish to them. Now, if you feel like you have the cards come out and you know exactly what they're trying to say, then great. That's what they're trying to say. But just don't be ashamed if you need a book or don't be afraid to embrace the book for the extra benefits it can give you. So do you need to have a gift from the first deck? No. Pick out your deck. Just make sure you give it time to pick it out from a place that's genuine. Um, don't be afraid to read with a book. And that's what we're going to cover for today. So that's it for now. The whole message, the whole point of recording this was just to say you don't have to have somebody buy you your first deck. It cannot, it doesn't have to be gifted. If it's gifted, then fucking badass. But don't wait for somebody else to make a choice that you're going to choose to help people and ascend to increase your enlightenment because that's, that's your responsibility. It's not anybody else's. And you can't leave shit in other people's hands all the time. Go buy a deck, but take the time, pick it out, make sure it resonates with you. 
feel the deck. Know the deck. And if you've got the wrong one, give it to somebody else. Cleanse it, you know, or tell them to cleanse it. Salt. Literally, light a candle. Candle goes out. Done. It's clean. But, uh, yeah. If you don't like the deck you picked it out, it doesn't resonate with you, gift it to somebody else who might want to read with it. Help them help somebody else. And, I mean, I bought a crystal ball once, for the record. It was like 60 bucks, and I was really young. And it hated my fucking guts. But I love my sister. So it ended up being buried with her cat. And that's great, because it didn't resonate with me. It resonated with her. So we left it with the animal so that it would keep her energy with it. But again, my point is, if it doesn't... If the deck you pick out at first ain't cutting it, you're just not connecting to it, don't give up at first, because you're reading for the first time. It's going to be difficult. But you'll know if you don't feel like the, the deck and the cards are are with you. And you can just ask them. Say, are we doing well together? I mean, blah, blah, blah. See what cards come out. Check the meanings. And it might be very clearly saying that this isn't working for us. <laughs> um, but it might say, yeah, just give me some time. So this is your lesson for today, universe. And peace out.